Your identity card, please, Mr. Sanderson. Look, Sergeant, we were... Please. You're a newspaper man, Mr. Sanderson. I actually think you would know better. What about your men who were roughing up a woman? A pregnant woman. You know the law. One child to a family. You don't have any criminal entries on your card, Mr. Sanderson, so we'll overlook this one. Unless you want to file a complaint against the arresting officer, in which case I can give you the forms. I can also give you some advice. If you want to open up this can of peas, you can choke on it. Am I getting through? Your identity card, please, Mr. Miller. Miller. I show you my card. Me and Karen, what do I do? Shh, take it easy. If they don't book you, they'll never check the records. Sorry. Uh, your card, please, Mr. Miller. You're a student, Mr. Miller. Yes, I see also an instructor. Yes. This is an upstate identification number. I'm from Syracuse. How long have you been in the city? A few months. You should have applied for a new number. <sighs> yeah, I know. It, the classes, they, you know, take a lot of time. I suggest you get to it as soon as possible. Meanwhile, you'd be doing your friend a favor if you'd help him keep that temper under control. All right. That's all. Officer. Get this over to Barstow at the Population Control Building. this to Mr. Barstow. Oh, he's talking to the director right now. Well, Sergeant O'Connell told me to bring this right over. Oh, okay. Can't we at least discuss this in private in my office? I am gone in 20 minutes, and I've got a report to write. Look, I'm just the middleman. 
I'm just telling you what the director told me. Mm -hmm. I can give you a direct quote. The Baker case was an abomination. Now, that's what he said, Barstow, and I'm sorry. I can feel all those sympathetic vibrations. Please, Mr. Silverman, stop bleeding all over my desk. The director wants a full hearing. Then let him set it up. I couldn't care less. How do I get through to you? Not through my big, oversized, compassionate heart. Look, I'm a cop. Never mind what it says on my ID. I'm a COP, cop. I'm not a family counselor. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychologist. If he wants arrests and interrogations, I'm super beautiful. But if he wants backs rubbed, and he knows what he can do with his badge, I suggest he close the pin before he does it. I'm sorry. I, I was trying to help. I, I'm indebted. Honey, that's not the point. It's our identification numbers. They're traceable. Alan, I'm sorry. Karen, you don't know them. You don't know what they're like. They're everywhere. They're every place. And if they find us, you know what they will do. Honey, they, they can't keep track of everyone. We're just two unimportant nobodies out of hundreds of millions of people. Don't call my wife a nobody. Okay? Okay, Mr. Nobody. I promise I'll try to be more careful. Now, hurry up. You know how Howard hates our being late for dinner. What time? 8 p.m. Why don't you call your brother and tell him that we've been kidnapped by Arab slavers? Why don't you just hurry up and get ready? When did you find out Howard was paranoid? I don't hear you. Nothing. What did you say? You're the only girl I know that's beautiful with child, without child, and in between. That doesn't make any sense. Come here. The only thing that makes sense is that I love you. I love your child. If it's a girl, it'll be just like Ellen. You know, she would have been a year old Friday of this week. We'll have another, Ellen. And this time, the child will be strong and healthy and stay with us forever. An immortal child. That's a trick. <laughs> What's a trick? It's been known to happen. Take your brother Howard. He'll be with us forever. Nobody lives forever. So they stop medication after 65. So what? Big deal. How many more years has anyone left anyway? Yeah. You think the government likes passing laws like that? It's the only way, believe me. Shelley, honey, do you have a listening audience in New Jersey? The music is supposed to soothe the savage beast, not wreck the inner ears. If it drowns you out, it's done its job. Flattery from you, my dear? Nothing but flattery. To my nephew and niece, whichever the case, may he or she arrive with a minimum of fuss and bother. He or she, with or without bother, will arrive. And it shall be immortal. I hope so. I fervently hope so. You, uh, you think you're doing the right thing? Oh, Howard, no more. We've gone through this so many times. Honey, I'm concerned about them. You're concerned about you. That is your singular, deep, and abiding concern, Howard, and it always has been. <laughs> well, well, he's alive. The corpse has risen. Those are the first words that you've uttered since the evening began, Alan. I'll treasure him. Because he'll be the last. I can't compete with you. Oh, well, that's the point. I don't want to compete. I don't want to fight. I simply want to tell you that you're making a big mistake. Which is not your problem. It most certainly is my problem. I happen to hold an executive position with the government. 
If I get involved with anything illegal, I can be crucified. And I can assure you that there are Judases around, poised, watching, waiting to stick me right between the shoulder blades. Howard, please. If I had the power to prevent this second conception, and I mean this, Karen, I would have stopped it cold. Well, seeing we've been spared your presence in our bed, you don't have that power. So why don't you just relax? Breathe through your nose, take it easy. Or if you're really worried, why don't you turn us over to population control? It just takes a phone call. I'd consider that, Alan. The thought has crossed my mind. But if I did, it would be for your own good. Howard, will you... Karen, will you give me a hand with dinner? Howard, will you lay off them for a while? I wasn't aware that I was attacking. You always attack. It's a reflex with you. I uh, saw a copy of the Popcorn Report this afternoon. Your name was on it. That was just a little mix-up in the subway. They didn't arrest me. They didn't even take my card. But they started the investigation. Tomorrow, the next day, they'll pick Karen up. You know that. So what? She's more than six months gone. But the baby hasn't been born yet. So you ran from Syracuse here. You didn't think they'd find you, so they found you. Now what? You think you can keep running? Where? Where to? You better face it, Alan. They're not gonna let that baby live. You're the only guy I know they can deliver a funeral oration with a smile. You think all of this pleases me? My own sister? I don't want to see her hurt. But let me tell you something. I learned to be a realist. I don't run away because I don't like the game. I play by the rules because the rules help me to survive. For which you have my condolences. To the way you live, Howard. In a perpetual sweat, walking tiptoed and in agony, in between nightmares. That's a terrible way to live. How right you are. But it's still preferable to six feet of earth. Those with meat permits, please use checkout lanes one and two. Please have your cards ready, shoppers. Mrs. Ellen Miller. Mrs. Miller, my name is Barstow. I'm an enforcement officer for the Department of Population Control. I wonder if you would come with us. I don't understand. We have a detainment order. This requires you to accompany us to department headquarters. Please, may I call my husband? You'll be permitted to contact please, him please later. Let me call I'm him. sorry, Mrs. Miller. You're under arrest. seem very frightening and confusing to you, but uh, let me assure you that no one here is going to hurt you. In a sense, we're here to help. Now then, you uh, came here from uh, Syracuse? Yes, the last year, after our first child died. Yes, I see. Miller, baby, female. She was only 15 days old. That's unfortunate. Yet I observed from Mrs. Miller's condition the mandatory hysterectomy wasn't performed. Well, we made the appeals to the government office, and 
No one would listen, so we just decided it was hopeless and left town and moved down here. I understand. It's not a very palatable law, isn't it? Perhaps if we'd practiced Planned Parenthood in the past, it wouldn't be necessary. But now it's the law. One child per family, no more, and no exceptions. But our baby's dead. After having lived longer than 10 days. The law is very specific, Mrs. Miller. I know how unfair this must seem to you. The child is gone. Now your wife is facing an operation that will end her ability to bear children. Not so sure I wouldn't have done the same thing if I'd been in your place. Now, when is uh, the child expected, Mrs. Miller? The end of November. Mm -hmm. Have you been experiencing any pains of any kind or any difficulties? No. Good. Now, we're at a very difficult period in the pregnancy, Mrs. Miller. I suppose we could bring on a miscarriage, but at this point, that always carries a danger to the mother. On the other hand, we could wait until the child is actually delivered and then immediately dispose of it. Dispose of it? You're not talking about a piece of garbage. I'm, I'm sorry. I, uh, I apologize. I didn't mean it to sound that way. I look both of you. I, I promise you there is no pain for the baby. There's no life to speak of, really. It's just a fleeting moment. It's all done with kindness, quickly, efficiently. You're murdering a baby, but you're doing it kindly. We don't think of it as murdering. We simply can't look at you it that You are taking way. a human life, and that is murder. Every human being has the right to live. No, Mr. Miller, you're wrong. In this day and age, not every human being has the right to live. You and your wife knew that when you conceived this child. You're free to go, Mr. Miller. Mrs. Miller will have to remain with us. We simply have to make sure that you don't disappear again. You'll find it very comfortable here, I assure you. Can I ask you a question? Do you sleep at night? Sometimes. If it's of any help to you, Mr. Miller, sometimes with vast difficulty, Miller. Number? I don't know. You don't know your number? I don't remember it. Well, never mind, I'll check your card. Do I have to stay in here? That's right, dear. Till when? Well, as long as you must. Well, when is my hearing? Whenever. What does that mean? Will it be soon? I may. There are others I really couldn't say. When do I get to see my husband again? I couldn't say. Please, you must have visiting hours. Yes, but you'll need a permit. Well, how do I get one? From the deputy director. Well, when can I see him? You should have seen him before you were brought to me. Well, nobody told me. Please, I don't understand. What no, kind of please, people are you? Please, dear, no outbursts. We're all very happy here. We respect each other's rights. Now, don't upset us. Don't be mean. I'm sorry, Sandy. Our newspaper can't run anything on the Miller problem. Please. How many times have I pushed for one of my stories? Mr. Iverson, once in your life, go out on a limb. Mr. Miller, I'm 64 years old. If I were to come down with uh, hepatitis today, I'd get a couple of days off, a couple of dirty looks, and some pills to see me through. But next month, I'll be 65. You know what I'll get then? A letter from the government telling me I'm only allowed medication to ease the pain. That's all. They just let me die. There are no exceptions. Not for me, not for you. Not for your baby. At least we could try.
please. I'm sorry, Mr. Miller. What you need is some crusading young editor. What you've got is a, a tired old man. When do they take her? This afternoon. I've been trying to call you since 6 o'clock. Where is she now? Population control building. Oh, Howard, you've got to get her out of that place. Oh, just like that, huh? Just like that. Will somebody please tell me how? Howard, twist somebody's arm. Step on somebody. Use, use some of the authority you're always talking about. Alan, what do you want me to do? Walk down there and take her by the hand and walk out? Believe me, this is, this is touchy. I mean, I've got some influence, of course, but I can't make it look like I'm trying to get special treatment. Why don't you call the deputy commissioner? You remember what he told you last night? He might do something. At this hour, it's almost midnight. What am I supposed to do, pick up a phone? Howard, I don't care if it's 12 midnight, 12 noon, or who you call. But you have to help us. We can't leave Karen in that place. There has to be something we can do. If you see out on the far end of a limb a vulnerable idiot swinging back and forth like a fig, that's me, Dummy Howard. Howard. Right. It, I appreciate it. Oh, well, I'm glad you appreciate it. I could get burned for this, scorched, and you're appreciative. Hello, Deputy Commissioner Joyce, please. Howard Drum speaking. Oh, I see. Yes, I understand, but it is very important. Yes, sir, I'll hold. He was just going to bed. I hope he's sober. Commissioner, uh, Howard Drum here. I'm sorry to disturb you at such an ungodly hour, sir, but it is a matter of utmost importance. No, sir. It's uh, about my sister, Karen Miller. This afternoon, she was detained by uh, agents from population control. Yes, sir. She's expecting in about uh, 10 weeks. Yes, sir. Uh, last year, a girl. But she died almost immediately, uh, within a few days. Yes, sir, I understand that, but I thought uh, if we could get her out of there, sir, it is a hard place, and it's not as though she were a criminal. Yes, sir, I'm sure they understand, and the child was just an accident, sir. Oh, yes, sir, the, the law is very clear, sir, and uh, that is not their intention, I'm sure. Yes, sir, good night, and thank you again. We're not going to give up our baby. Alan, believe me. It's the only way. You have no choice. Now, I can get her out of there, but you have to give up the baby. What kind of a man are you? Scared. That kind of a man. Take my baby away. Iverson printed it. It was just a wild idea. I didn't think anything would come of it. Oh, for heaven's sake, why? Less than half an hour ago, I received a call from Joyce, the deputy commissioner. He was outraged, Alan, outraged. Last night, he put his job in, 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 in jeopardy for you. Just for me, Alan. All right, for me, then. 
because I went to him for you. And this is the, this is the thanks I get. This is the appreciation, the, the, the gratitude. Come off it, Howard. You're still standing on your feet, aren't you? You're breathing. You're surviving. That's your big thing, isn't it? Survival? <laughs> That's a crime, huh? That's a sin. That's an unforgivable thing that a man wants to stay alive. Listen, I kept your wife from ten stinking rotten weeks in a detention cell. Your sister. My sister was never pregnant. Your wife, Alan. You're responsible for her. In one hour, one hour, I have to report to the district commissioner. This could be the end for me now. Right, just relax. Settle down. What's done is done. Maybe now that it's out in the open, they'll be forced to make an exception. Oh, that's right. Out of a fairy tale. That's what that is. It's euphoria time. It's the happy idiot hour. They're not going to make any exception because you fixed it. So they can. Because it's out in the open, now you get nailed. Howard, what are you going to tell them? Whatever I have to, to protect myself. Wait a minute. She asked you a question. What are you going to tell them? I'm going in there on my hands and knees if necessary. And I hope and pray that they listen to me. And us? I think Karen should return to population control. No, I won't spend another hour there. Not to stay. Can't you see either of you? This is your only chance. I think you ought to let them bring on the baby now. You're not criminals. Once this matter is taken care of, the governor will be satisfied. Karen, please, if not for yourself, just this once, think of me. I am thinking of you, Howard. I'm sorry, but I'm a little sick. Honey. We can't stay here. Not if we want to keep the baby. Then we'll go. Portland, Maine. Is the 434 the next train out? That's right. Leaving from gate 11 at 434. How many? Two. One way. Sorry, sir. Your account seems to have been closed. It's impossible. I'll verify that for you, sir. has been red-lighted by population control. You... Sir! Sir! Emergency. Come on. What happened? They say no. They canceled my card. That means yours isn't any good either. Alan, what are we going to do? Stay here till I get back. Thank <laughs> you. 
are we going? We have a train to catch. But... I got a car. Population control, enforcement division. We asked about the 434 to Portland, Maine. What's the train's first stop? Where can I pick him up? Rochester, Massachusetts. Fine, fine. That's good work. I need the first plane to Boston. I have a car standing by to take me to Dorchester. Yes, sir. Please. Oh, good to see you again, sir. Thank you. Been so long since we've seen you, thought you might have started flying. No, no, no. That's for young men in a desperate hurry. Frankly, I've forgotten what it's like to be desperate. Been reading all your articles. Very interesting. Very ineffectual, I'm afraid. Let's try a little old men's food, shall we? Dry toast and coffee. Very good, sir. And now, what may I do for you young people? Karen? Really, Eleanor, I'm not hungry. I know you have to get something. It's a long trip. I don't think I can eat anything. Have two club sandwiches and two coffees, please. I'll have a glass of milk. And a glass of milk. And the milk. Right. It's my baby, too. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The Enforcement Division of the Population Control has asked us to examine all your identification cards. Would you have all the cards ready, please? Alan, what are we going to do? We got out of here. Excuse me. I, I hope you don't mind this. In uh, my name is Quincy George. There's a kind of threadbare cliché about things being darkest just before the dawn. Now, could the two of you manage to look as if you believe that aphorism and smile a little? Uh, Alan, is it? And, uh, Karen? I... Uh, forgive me, please. I, I couldn't help listening in. Good evening, Mr. George. Oh, good evening, Vince. I missed you on my last trip. I had a touch of the flu. Nothing serious. Thank you, sir. They've asked me to check all the identity cards. Not that I had to see yours, of course. What, some sort of a problem? It seems that a man was robbed at the station in New York. They think that the man that did it might be on this train. Mm, well, I hope you catch him. Oh, Vincent, uh, say hello to my nephew and his wife. Alan, Karen. Vincent is the last vestige of a gentle but dying era. Vincent goes back to the days of the old Chicago Limited when passenger trains were still a way of life for many of us. How do you do? I wonder, sir, if I might see your identity card. I'm afraid you're out of luck, dear Vincent. The children just returned from France, and uh, we barely had time to make this connection. Their, uh, their cards will be issued in Boston. But really, sir, oh, I... Oh, for heaven's sakes, Vincent, how about you? All right, Mr. George. Nice to meet you, too. You seem to have a lot of influence. Some. I did rob that man. I had to hit him. Oh. Honey, there wasn't anything I could do. He saw me going through his coat. The most unpardonable of the sins, getting caught. And a petty theft, most inexpertly done. I'm afraid, Alan, you're not the criminal type. I suppose you're gonna try to run the Canadian border. Well, the young lady's condition is obvious. Since the Canadian laws are not quite as barbaric as our own, I assume this would be your objective. You have another child? She died a year ago. A year, a decade. We somehow managed to mourn long after the wreath has been taken down, didn't we? I had three sons. None of them survived the Southeast Asian Wars. <clears throat> uh, we're going to be in Boston in an hour. I think you'd best come with me. 
You'll need some help getting across that border. Well, the alternative is getting picked up and returned to the authorities. If you stay with me for a while, maybe I can be of some help. Why are you doing this? Must you ask, child? Isn't it enough that I want to do it? Good evening, John. Good evening, Senator. Did you have a good trip? Very pleasant, thank you. John, say hello to Alan and Karen. They'll be staying with us for a while. Oh, it's a pleasure. May I? Alan, why don't you ride in the front? He calls you Senator. Habit pattern. I was in the Senate for nearly 20 years, but I've been out of that august body for nine years now. Still, we cling to our titles as if they were household gods. Please. This is a lovely car. Thank you. John takes excellent care of it. Maybe someday the government will allow them to be made again. Two cc's left. Oh, yes, I, I took one this morning. All right, Friday then. Oh, uh, Sam, I have a young couple staying with me. Very nice young people. She's expecting a baby in a couple of months, and, uh, no, no, they can't. Uh, their first child died shortly after birth. And, uh, they've run away. I, um... I thought maybe we might be able to do something for them through the hospital. Yes, I, I know it's dangerous, but when did we ever let that bother us? <laughs> good, good. I knew you'd help. Well, come by Friday for dinner, and we'll work out the details then. I'd like you to meet them. <laughs> All right. You interested in plants, Alan? Difficult to be interested in something you rarely see. <laughs> Once, for as far as you could see, these hills around here were covered with wildflowers. It was beautiful. Now my fellow man is inching up on me, brick by brick. Senator? I'm not sure if we should stay. Of course you'll stay. It's already been arranged. The baby will be born at the doctor's hospital. Of course, their records will have to be slightly altered. But there'll be no reason for you to lose that child. What can I say? As little as possible. It may well be that I'm doing you no service at all. Once that baby is born, there's no turning back. Then it's that deadly ritual of track covering. And that can be an ugly, relentless procedure, as you well know. It doesn't make any difference, as long as the baby survives. Suppose they catch us. What will happen to the baby? Nothing. Once the birth is recorded in the hospital, no action will be taken against the child. We haven't sunk that low yet. Alan! She's lovely. I 
I'll see that Sam Tyler takes especially good care of her. Now, you make sure that you do the same, hmm? She died several years ago, very quietly. You must miss her very much. Beyond language, I'm afraid. Come, let's uh, sit down and have some coffee. But a very, uh, a very gentle woman. I think all of this became too much for her. It frightened her. I sometimes think that she reached the point where she preferred not to live. Senator, may I speak with you, please? Yes, one moment. Uh, uh, help yourself. Sugar. Ask him to wait, John. Yes, sir. It seems that the relentless pursuit has already begun. Mr. Barstow from the Department of Population Control is in the hall. Now the question is, do we brazen it out or do we try to hide you two? Mr. George, I wouldn't suggest that. Thank you, John. Please come in, Mr. Barstow. Check me, Mr. George. I am in. Good evening, Mrs. Miller. Mr. George, I represent the Department of Population Control. I think you know why I'm here. Will you please come with me now? Not at all. They are house guests of mine, and the hour is late. Mr. George, you are a very influential man. I'm not unaware of that. As to your own complicity in all of this, I'm willing to forget it. Am I the recipient of this special privilege because of my status or my antiquity? But it makes no difference. I'm rather used to having things my own way. And what I particularly want at this moment is to enjoy a quiet evening with some friends. That won't be possible. You have a warrant? You know, that's not necessary. Perhaps not in New York. Here, it most certainly is. Don't be ridiculous. These people are fugitives from justice. Now, Senator, you've done too much already for Please. Me. I have a suggestion, Mr. Barstow. Why don't you leave now and forget that you ever found these people? I'm sure that we don't lack for enough crime and violence and mayhem that you couldn't track down more important prey. If I leave now, Mr. George, keep your doors open because I'll be back with a warrant. If you can find a judge who will issue one. I'll find one. Good. Because for every judge you find, I'll find a higher one who'll enjoin you from entering my property. I hope I have made myself perfectly clear. No, Mr. Silverman, I can't get a warrant locally. I'm going to Boston to see a federal judge. No, I'm not going to let it alone. I don't care who he is. I posted surveillance on the property to make sure the Millers don't escape. Thank you. I appreciate it. What's the matter? Go back to sleep. What's the matter? The police are down by the gate. How long have they been there? I don't know. We're trapped. The baby, they I won't let us go to the hospital. We don't have to worry about that for two weeks. They can't hang around that long. Alan, we have to get we out of here. don't have any place to go. You know what, what Mr. George said about his wife? Not, 
wanting to live in this kind of world. It's the only world we've got. Tyler, please. George, call me. Sam, how soon can you get over here? Yes, it's urgent. Another glass of water, please. Yes, sir. Better, sir. You see? There still are wildflowers in the world. <laughs> For you, darling. Alan, you're about as good a horticulturist as you are a criminal. You have just presented your wife with a lovely but all too common weed. Never mind him. It's the thought. Hello, Karen. I tried the bell, but no one answered. May I join you? Please, just give me a moment. I've come to help. I was stopped at the gate, nearly searched. It's quite obvious that you're virtual prisoners in this house. Senator George? I'm Howard Drum, Karen's brother. I'm quite sure that you're convinced that this is the right action to take, but... Uh, I'm convinced it's the only action to take. I'm sorry, Senator, but I have to disagree with you. Certainly, I'm concerned about uh, Karen's welfare and the welfare of the child. But what she and her husband have done has alienated the government. I hope it's not too late to rectify that. Senator? I'm afraid it's not up to me, Mr. Drum. Alan and your sister are welcome to stay in my home as long as they wish to. Why don't you wash up? I'm getting a little hungry. You're welcome to stay to lunch, Mr. Drum. Sir, let me be blunt. This morning, the party director phoned Washington. They appeal to you to uphold the laws of the land and not to put yourself in further jeopardy. Senator! The name Quincy George is still respected throughout the country. We all wish it to continue so. You offer me my own good name. What do you offer your sister? Karen, listen to me. The government has decided to grant me a hearing if you'll come back with me now. Will I be able to keep the baby? I'm sure that we can get a suspended sentence on the criminal charges. The baby, Howard. Isn't it enough that I can keep you out of prison? No, Howard, it's not. Leave us alone. Go back to New York. I can't go back. Not without you. Don't you understand that? What do you want me to do? Get on my hands and knees and crawl? I'll do that if you want me to. But you've got to come back with me. Karen, everything I have, everything I have is on the line. I cannot go back alone. Howard, I'm sorry. I know you think you're doing the right thing. Maybe in the end we'll lose everything anyway. I won't give up the baby. Not while I can still run. Uh, I'm Dr. Tyler. I'm expected. Is someone sick, doctor? No, I'm expected for dinner. And the bag. Oh, I always carry it. One never knows. Sudden accident or emergency. May I see it, doctor? Oh, really, it's of no importance. Please step out of the car, doctor, with the bag. Thank you. 
can sue him. Really, doctor, were you expecting a sudden outbreak of diabetes? I have several patients who... I'm sure you do. I assume none of your patients is over 65. That would be breaking the law, doctor. I know the law, sir. Good. And I'm sure you have a permit for this medication. Not with me. And the patients? Which patients are these medications for? Mr. Barstow, if you will let me explain. My records are all back at the office. I I'm sure you'll find everything in order. Well, surely you know who they are. How many? A dozen? Five? Two? One name, doctor. I'm sorry. So am I. I'll follow you back to your office. I want to see those records of yours. You, you can come by the office tomorrow. Now, doctor. up at this hour, but you're going to have to leave here. No, it, it's not by choice. Please believe me. If I thought you could remain here safely, I wouldn't ask you to go. They're waiting for us outside. John, is everything ready? Yes, sir. John has prepared this back seat to make it appear as if two people are hiding there. John and I will go to the gate and try to leave. When the police officer looks in the back seat, We'll drive away and hope that he follows us. Now, if he does, that'll give you a chance to get away in Mr. Drum's car. John is a man of many talents. Now, we can't let you do this. They'll catch up with you. That is unimportant at this point. What really matters is that, baby, you're gonna have to try to get to Canada. I suggest going north through Vermont and then trying to cross the border on one of the back roads. John has prepared this map. Give this letter to my good friend Jean-Paul de Croix. He's Quebec's deputy finance minister. He'll protect you once you're across that border. I don't think so. I can't permit you to leave. How do you intend on stopping? All I have to do is walk out that door and down to the gate, and I swear to you. I swear to you I'll do it. It's getting late. We're running out of time. You're not running out of anything. You're the senator. You'll come out of this in brass and on a pedestal. You don't have to worry about survival. But what about us, senator? What about that scrambling, dying little breed at your feet? Think about us. Alan, read that letter, please, aloud. My dear Jean-Paul, this will introduce Alan and Karen Miller. They have fled the United States, fearing for the life of their unborn child. I know you will understand and do what you can to give them asylum. By the time you read this, I will most certainly, I will most certainly be dead. Go on. My doctor was detained by the police while bringing me my supply of insulin. By tomorrow, it could be over. I knew that this would happen someday. But at least I can put my death to good use. If the Millers find sanctuary in your province, it will be worthwhile. With fondness 
and gratitude for many years of your warm friendship. Byron Maine, Quincy George. This is insanity. Surely they'll make an exception in your case. No. no I've broken the law long enough. I thought that if I stayed alive, maybe, just maybe, I could help instill some saneness in this world of ours. But I failed. I've lost my battle. But maybe I've won the war. One child will be born. One young couple will break through this maze of cannibalistic law. And that will scale the hell out of them, because they know that another will try. And then another. And when that happens, and it will, Mr. Drum, they'll have to admit the flaw in the fabric, and the law will be changed. I'd like to be part of that. Yes, there were things than dying, living without pride or point. I think it was Horace Mann who once said, a man should be ashamed to die unless he's won some victory for humanity. John, open the doors. Alan, would you turn that light off, please? Senator. Karen, allow me to win just one small victory for humanity. Will you do that? Remember now, stay off the turnpike. Just follow the map. When you get close to that border, just barrel your way across any way you can. That letter will protect you. That's me. The old man almost had me fooled. I always figured he was crazy, but I never thought he was stupid. All right, let's go. You're under arrest, mister. Now, don't make me use this. For that, go ahead. Because if that's what we've come to, I don't think our baby will be missing much. Neither will we. Stop! We better get out of here. Come. It's a little too late to worry about that now, isn't it?
123. Won't be long now. How's the gas? We'll make it. How do you feel? Okay. Negotiations will continue in Paris next week. One of the country's finest patriots died this morning at the age of 72. Quincy George, former senator from Massachusetts, was admitted to Lexington General Hospital this morning where he died shortly after his arrival. The cause of death was not specified. Senator George was the author of many major bills, often dealing with personal liberties. He retired from the Senate nine years ago and had been living alone in his home at Dorchester. The president has expressed shock and a sense of deep personal loss. You may remember... Uh-oh.
Well, you won't be needing me anymore. Where are you going? I'm going back. Barstow is dead. I can tell him that you forced me to go with you. Why, Howard? Shelley's back there. Shelley and some loose ends of a misbegotten life. Have Shelley join you here. Don't take the chance. <laughs> Play it safe. I've made a career out of that. How did you describe it, Alan? Tiptoe and in agony. Wasn't that it? Maybe we can change it. Maybe some of us can really give it a try. No, it isn't that I've suddenly uh, gotten brave, Alan. It's just that I've run out of fear. Anyway, act as though you're shooting at me. Have some fun for a change. Cover your ears. You all right? Yes, I'm all right. Thank you. I'm uh, Howard Drum. They took me hostage. I managed to get away after they stopped the car. Should we go in there after him? You know better than that. Uh, Sergeant, you've got to get me to a telephone. I have to talk to party headquarters. All right, let's go. Nothing we can do now. 